Hi guys, Sarah the Northwood Stitcher. I am supposed to be cleaning my craft room and I thought instead I would make a video. <laughs> so this is how it happens. <laughs> I have some company coming in the next few weeks and I do need to tidy this space up, but there was just so much stuff that I wanted to show you guys. So here I am. We are actually getting ready for a nor'easter that's gonna, this is being filmed on Tuesday, the 2nd of April. And tomorrow we're supposed to, tomorrow night we're supposed to get a nor'easter that's gonna give us anywhere from eight to 18 inches of snow. Hard to believe, cause today's like 55 degrees. And I just took Abby for a little walk outside and she had a fantastic time because there's just like snow piles around from where we plowed for the last storm, but everything's melted. It's beginning to look like spring. Good news is, is it's spring snow, it won't stay around. So last weekend, I went off to Camp Wool, which is for me almost a two hour drive. Camp Wool is a shop located in Hollis Center, Maine, and it has everything in it. It's just a gorgeous shop. It's floor to ceiling of beauty and wonder. And there is an upstairs and I have to confess that I did not go upstairs. The scary part was my husband took me for uh, a ride. So I was glad that he came with me since it was a long drive. But I did so much damage in just 15 minutes that I did not want to go upstairs. And I just wanted to say, okay, I got what I came for, let's go. I, I went there for the sole purpose to get some felt to do the backings of pillows and to start those acorns for the prairie schooler, which are the prairie schooler acorns. Ah, here they are. This is book number 65. Aren't those cute? And it's just called acorns. But I really had to pick up some felt so I could do some of the leaves and then the actual acorn tops, which, you know, is just a cute little stitch. I have to have these for next fall. And it's got the outline of the pattern that you need to follow on the back. Give you an idea. I don't know what size they stitched this on. I haven't gotten that far. But since it's such a long drive down there, I thought, okay, what else do I want? There's a couple of other things, upcoming stitches I wanted backings for. So I picked out quite a few colors. Now these were bundles from, I don't know what they're called, but they were $9 bundles. They do have overdyes, which have much uh, different variety of color range, but I just love these. So these are for my fall creations, berries that I might be making. So I've got some leaf colors, I've got some stem colors, and then there was a, a bin where there's some remnants, I guess, and they're priced differently. They're priced based on the color that they've been bundled up as. This one's poor thing is so wrinkled, but I thought this would be great for the back of Return of the Whales. I showed that design earlier. Do I have it handy to show you? Yes, I do. <laughs> So I thought that might be a good pairing for the back because it reminded me of water. So I'm really excited to get this stuff all kitted up and see how it goes. So there's that, I'm gonna put acorns down. It was a lot of damage in a short period of time. I went up, paid for my stuff and my husband said, that's it? I'm like, what do you mean that's it? Do you want me to go do some more damage? It's like, you're done? We, we just got here. And I said, I'm done. <laughs> so this is another idea for the back of that pillow. There's another gray in here and a tan. This was just a remnant bundle. These are pinned or stapled together. So I thought that was a great combination. <laughs> I don't know where else to purchase stuff like this in my area. So I was really excited to finally get down there because the last time I went to Camp Wool, they were actually located in another town on our way up to camp. Now that was a northerly direction and it was on the way, it was great. But now they're located in a part of Maine that is a southerly direction. And they're just, I didn't have any other errands along that route to do. 
So it's probably going to be a yearly pilgrimage. But look at that green. That would be a great leaf color. This is just a great backing for maybe, I don't know, Halloween stuff. And I thought this was also a good leaf color. This as well. Or even the tops of the acorns. And if that's too big, this is a smaller print. I like that. But this might also work well too. I don't know what I'm doing. And then I thought this is a great color for leaves for when I do berries, if I do berries. And I think, I was talking about this out loud in the car, I could add floral wire or maybe a pipe cleaner in between the felt to be able to mold the felt to bend the leaf to give it some shape. So I've got some ideas and I'm excited about it. Now I did get more than just that at Camp Wall. I think I want to show it to you. Hold on, let me grab it. When I showed this finish, this was the Miss Mary Mac. I told you it was in a shadow box type frame. So there's some real depth to this frame. And I wanted to put a bunch of silver buttons in the bottom because it's silver buttons all down her back. Well, that could get kind of pricey, buying a bunch of silver buttons. And I went through everything that I had. I don't have any silver buttons. So while I was down at Camp Wall, I actually found a big bag of buttons for $7. They are acrylic, or plastic, but they're bright, they're shiny. They'll capture the light. So I am gonna take this apart and add the buttons to the base of this frame. I think that'll be really cute. One side is kind of flat silver and the other side is a crystal lean type. So it'll capture the light, it'll capture somebody's attention. So I'm excited to get that done. I might just take that down and do it in front of the TV. And then the only other purchase there, I don't know why. This was a 2023 fall issue of the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. She had this marked for half price. And I don't have a subscription anymore. So I thought, yes, please, I need to have it. This is full of some really cute fall Halloween cross stitch and punch needle designs. So I think I'm going to have some fun with this. This needs to go back downstairs so I can read, 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 read. It was a fun trip to take because the weather was good for now. And it's just a part of the state we hadn't been to before. And after we went to the shop, she, she knew we drove all the way down from China. So she said, oh, there's a diner. Go down here and take this right and go down here and it's on the left. And three miles from the store was this nice little family diner. And we got there and they had some specials. So I got my lobster roll and my husband had a turkey club and it was just lovely, absolutely lovely. Great little trip, nice toot. But round trip, it was almost five hours. Yeah. Yeah, about five hours round trip. Iced coffee day today. So that was quite a, quite a drive. What else happened today? Oh, and I have some finishes, small ones. I should say something too, because like the past three videos I've been saying, oh, I've got this finished, I've got that finished. By no means am I an avid finisher. <laughs> I have a pile of stuff that has been sitting in a pile for so many years, it's embarrassing. This is one example. I don't know when I did this cross stitch, but it could be 10 years old. I don't, I don't know anything about this. But it, it's one of those weird little ornaments that's been sitting in this pile of finished projects and I haven't had the energy or, I don't know, motivation to finish it. So finally it's done. I'm, I'm suspecting this was a free pattern with either a magazine and a skein was attached to play with the metallic. So I finished this in a cute little pie pan that I got from Goodwill. I got a set of three of these for $2. 
Now this had a removable base, of course. So I used silicone because we were getting tile work done and some silicone was being used. I used silicone to glue metal to metal because that is the best stuff. Then, you know, there's some mess. I just used regular glue to glue the cross stitch down. I used a piece of really cute trim to cover up the edge of the, the um, cut fabric. I glued a plastic um, ornament star to the top to hide where my trim met. And then on the back, I just put on a piece of felt, stitched the year that I finished it, fully finished. I don't know when I stitched it. And I've got a cute little ornament. And I've got so many trees and large trees that this will be great for a lower branch. I like to put bigger ornaments on the bottom of the tree and they get smaller as they go up. So this is, I'm so glad it's finally finished because it has beads on it and I get to enjoy it. But unfortunately, I'm terribly sorry. I have no idea. And I don't know anything about this pattern. Same thing with that. Uh, the, uh, St. Patty's Day one, the Celtic alphabet. I'm still looking around here. I thought, well, it should be in my St. Patrick's Day Easter Valentine's folder. It's not, it will pop up and I'll, I'll tell you guys about it when I do find it. Until then, I also got another finish done. I think I, I showed you guys my dimension kit collection because I had a bunch of these little ornaments. I think I've got four in, in all. And I put them in a cute little container so I can take it downstairs and start stitching on them. I finally finished this one. This is probably several years in the making. And I get to put that um, pattern and chart away. It's stitched on a perforated plastic. And when I finished stitching it, I just covered it with a cheaper felt I call this the commercial felt stuff you get at um, Ha, blah, 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 Michaels or Joanne Fabrics, the thin. And I glued it to the back bigger than the actual plastic. And then I can just, it's so bendy that I can just kind of bend the plastic to cut the little boogers off the sides. So, and then I use a fishing line to go through the top so it'll hang. So I think that's a cute little finish. And I'm, I was going to make two of these, but it's a dimensions kit and I am so done with the fiddly parts of dimension kits and the confetti stitches. And it's just, I'm not going to do two of these. This is mine. I'll keep the chart in case I get motivated, but I'm just going to put this in my collection. I don't need any more cross stitch ornaments, but I can't stop making them. I enjoy them. So, so that's, Done. Oh, and I had a funny thing happen to me. I have been looking for what I thought was Gentle Arts Falcon Brown. And I've looked at all these different places that I've gone and they've had specialty flosses. I even checked Campbell. And can't find it. Turns out it's not a Gentle Arts. It is a Gloriana color. So I needed that to finish kitting up my... Let me take it out for you guys. It's behind two pieces of plastic. The Jeanette Douglas egg corn shaker box. I love this. I don't have a shaker box, but I'll find something to finish this with. So the only reason I needed the Gloriana was the round border, which has all that variegation in it because it's such a beautiful over dyed silk. I'm going to sub it out at this point. I'm done playing hunt, hunt, hunt. I've got all the other colors that I need. So I need to kit this one out and just be done with it. For the amount of money that a Gloriana silk is gonna cost me, I'll just substitute it out and not worry about it. I've had too many recent issues where I've run out of a a floss recently and I've had to go on to 123 and order something and yes you know the cardinal rule nothing can come through the mail you can't just have like one skein of floss come to you alone so it has to travel with somebody else so yes I've gotten more things with it <laughs> but I've had to do this three times 
for, let's see, I had to get some extra floss for Lucy Beam Disturbed Women. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I think this was a Nashville release last year. And can you see what it says? Yeah, it does show up. Evaluation Center for Disturbed Women Ward B. Now, originally I thought I, I wasn't attracted to this stitch. I kind of took offense to it because it's a disturbing thing that somebody made a sign about it. But how she did it, when I opened up the chart, it's an educational piece. When you open up the chart, she takes the time and in each chart are two educational sheets. These are reasons for admission from 1864 to 1899. This is some sort of interpretation that she took from West Virginia Hospital for the Insane in Weston, West Virginia from October 22nd, 1864 to December 12th, 1889. This is an abbreviated list of reasons for admission per hospital's logbook. It's disturbing to say the least that women were committed for things they could not control, time of life or grief. Upon reading this list, it isn't difficult to realize how far we've come as a society on the treatment of women in the last 100 years. It's my sincere hope we never go back to the subjugation and continue to move forward in liberty for our hopes and dreams to be realized and celebrated. And I do know enough about the history of mental health that people could be admitted to these hospitals just from a relative saying something and suggesting that somebody suffered from one of these conditions. Reasons for admission. Asthma, bad company, bad whiskey, bite of a rattlesnake, bloody flux, what does that mean? Brain fever, business nerves. I mean, the list of craziness goes on. People were admitted for deaths of sons in the war, desertion by husband, disappointed affection, Dissipation of nerves, dog bite. I mean, it's a crazy list. And it made me reflect on a, uh, a personal issue. My great grandmother, who, my grandfather's mother, who was widowed very young with three young boys. I don't know what year this happened. And my grandfather spoke very poorly of his mother. He was extremely angry and disappointed. She could not provide for three boys back then on, I think it was a secretary's salary, whatever she was able to do for work. It's my understanding she was a secretary at some point in time. And it was my understanding that she went crazy and had to be admitted. I'm pretty sure she just suffered from complete exhaustion and inability to provide. And I do know having three boys must have been extremely financially taxing because my grandfather, he alone got hit while riding his bike by a trolley and had to go to the hospital, had to have surgery, lost a kidney. So I don't know about the other two boys, my other great uncles, what other problems or things did they get into? Were they accident prone? But the long and short of it was that all three boys were given up to a farming orphanage. So it was like a working farm and a school and really an orphanage. They weren't ever adopted out. They just grew up there. 
So I don't know if she like didn't relinquish total parental. It doesn't sound like she did. I never really found out, so maybe I should explore this. Anyway, all three boys grew to be very successful men. But the, um, the, the, you know, the, the upset about that. I never really got to learn much more about my great grandmother because of that. My grandfather did not want to talk about her. And if he did, he didn't speak nicely about her, but I'm sure she did the best and everything that she could. And it sounds like where they were placed was a successful place. I never heard, he never alluded to any kind of um, abuse there. So I don't know. And all three of them were extremely bright and they all went on to college. My One of my great uncles was a founder or developer of the airbags that are in our cars now. Um, he was a, my grandfather was a, a naval captain in the war, World War II, and was an English professor. He was a successful published writer and author of several books. And I don't know about my other great uncle, so I have to find out. It just led me down this rabbit hole, but it's a disturbing stitch because I'm stitching it thinking, you know, this would be fun to have because my husband has a tombstone above his bed about coffee. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord something about bringing me coffee. And, you know, I thought, well, I have this one above my bed, but now it's not so funny. Now it's like, wow, maybe I should find out some more, but it is a beautiful stitch and I will show it to you. Sorry for that little rant on the side note. It's a big piece. I should have done it on something smaller. This is a 28 28 count fabric by Stephanie called Sassanach Sass Sassanach um, linen. I love the fabric. It's, it's going to have the effect that I want it to have. And I'm actually considering putting it on a burnt out board and maybe burning the edges to make it look even older. Um, and it'll probably go on the staircase coming up to the the craft room up here, the lair. But it has sent me down a rabbit hole of wanting to know a little bit more about my great grandmother that I never met and how, how she came to be. And I know that she had to have shock therapy. So it's just a sad, sad realization. Disturbed women. Yeah, aren't we all at some point in time? <clears throat> but I probably could have done it on a smaller count because it's it's pretty big. And I really appreciate the designer for putting the um, informative bit in there about the stitch. And I had to order more the cucumber, which is Gentle Arts. So that's coming in the mail. So I'm just going to finish doing the the purple for now. So that's Lucy Beam's Disturbed Women. And it's educational, but it's bothering me. Probably shouldn't have gotten it. It'll be a fun thing to have done. There's my dental reminder card. <laughs> when you lose mail and it ends up in your craft stuff. I wanted to also share with you a book that I bought on, I got this on Amazon and I know you can get it on eBay and Amazon, but I think Amazon had the cheaper price and I want to blame, I think I have to blame Campbell for this. She got a copy and then she showed it in a zoom and I just went, oh, I have to have it. Floral folk, folk art in cross stitch. I love this book. There are so many gorgeous colors in this. After such a dark winter, I'm really excited to open this and go through some of these stitches and just pick beautiful, colorful things out. And the ideas are endless. 
It's a beautifully put together. This is by Dor Doreen Jones. And I think she's got a couple of books out, unfortunately. I'm gonna have to get them all now. But this will keep me busy for a while. I've gotta behave. So I think how it's done is you get the colored pictures and then graphs. Maybe it's done by chapters. Look at those. And depending on what count you stitch it on, depends on how big it is. So you have ideas for hoops, pillow forms, um, sweet little gifts. These are just beautiful. What a great birthday gift. So this is the Project Gallery. I I can't say enough about this book. It just goes on and on. Okay, that's charts. Okay, so it's not, not much for the Project Gallery. Let's see if I've gotten them all. Oh, look at this one. But you see how you can just take sections? You can take one of those flowers and do a bookmark. Easy peasy. Absolutely beautiful. And depending on what fabric you put it on, it'll really pop. It was less than $20. Floral Folk Art in Cross Stitch, Doreen Jones. It was hard for me to bring this upstairs because I want to put this on my bedside and just go f pour through it. There are great ideas for table toppers, table runners, frame pieces, like I said, different motifs. It's just so full of color and beauty. I had to have it. I think that's it for the gallery, you guys. Yeah, it sounds like it. So, this was a comfort book for me. And I'm gonna take it downstairs because I think my next step is to get my little post-its out and tab everything that I'm interested in, then bring it back up here for kidding. So that is going to go back downstairs with my Lucy Beam. And let me see what else I got. Oh, I got some happy mail because I had some thread that couldn't travel alone. This pile came from 123 Stitch. And I have a couple more coming. But 123 Stitch has, a, has so many things there. I mean, I always check to see what kind of dies they have because I think I spoke to you last video about how I use dies when I'm making my cards for example. Now little metal plates with teeth on them if you will. It's got a sharp edge that'll cut the shape out of what you buy. So I bought these cute little flower or leaf uh, dies. They are teeny and I have found that some dies work really well with felt. So I'll try, not the thick one I just bought from Campbell, but the thin stuff. So I'll try running this through with some felt colors. And I'll also try with some of my pattern papers because I think these would be really cute little accents on some of my cards and some other designs that I do. So I'm excited about that. They come all attached and you just snap them apart and then the struggle is real, but how do you store these? I put them back in the sleeve and then I keep them on a big magnet sheet, which are housed in little containers. I have to give you a tour of that sometime if you're interested. And the other things were stitchy related. I can't remember what floss color I got, but I got floss. But then I also picked up something that's been on my wish list for a while, a tiny modernist and this is Halloween wreath. Now this cute little chart <laughs> came out in 2021. 
Halloween Wreath by Tiny Modernist. I'm doing this in a hoop. I think it's so cute. And I've already decided I really want to do this probably on Dirty Khaki. I think that's what it's called. It looks like it'll probably be an 18 count, but it's it's like the color of uh, Spools calls it best, a uh, brown paper bag. And I'll change the pumpkin colors, which I feel are a little too vibrant in the photo, but I'll do a floss toss. I want them a little more muted. And I really love all the other colors in here. They really are great and they pop. So I'm excited to finally get this. Unfortunately, it's gonna go in my Halloween pile, which is big and mighty. So I don't know when I'll get around to it, but I just love this. So if you did this, let me know. I'd like to know if you did any changes on it. Put that away. And this, I'm, I might have a duplicate of. I don't think so because I think I saw a blue one in my travels. This one's red. So this is Folk Art Sampler. It's a Diane Authors and the charts put out by Imaginating. I love this. I don't know if I'm going to do it in red, but it's just gorgeous. And I love the black work that's done in the border. Now I know I have another one similar to this and it might be another imagine, imaginating chart. So what I'd like to do is to pair these up and come to a decision on what I'm gonna do and which one I'm gonna start first and then find out if I did get a duplicate. <laughs> I don't know, we'll find out. <laughs> so that is a plastic bag I don't need anymore. Um, let's see, I got a little list here to try to keep me on topic. I showed that. Oh, and I wanted to give a, a shout out to Jackie, whose floss tube is Cross My Stitches. If you haven't checked out her channel, go over and do it. It's, it's a fun, fun place to be. So I just wanted to give her a thank you. She gave me a shout out and I just wanted to let her know that, hey, <laughs> I'm shouting you out. And I just love how we support each other in this community. And I just wanted to say thank you. And I love your stuff. And I'm glad you like mine. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> and I also wanted to share, and I think it's in my phone, so I can't do this, but maybe I can. No, I can't because I didn't write any information down. Hold on. This is the problem with filming with my camera. I don't have my camera to go to for notes, but I had to show you guys. Karen took the time to send me another picture of one of her finishes and um, nothing from her sister. So I wonder what her sister's up to, but she finished Stitchy Stars by Lori Holt. And the way she did it was fantastic. And I'll have to show you next um, one of my finishes similar to it. She did it on a 14 gray Yorkshire Zweigart and she did it one over one with all the called for weeks dye works. Um, but then she had, it's a skinny little stitch. Isn't it cute? I'm going to show it here. <laughs> Maybe I've already shown it when I'm editing. Um, but she went to an estate sale and she found this perfect frame. It was a $4 purchase. And when she went to go mount it, she has mounted it over the glass. And I, I sometimes get stuck here because I go to Goodwill and I find stuff and I flip it over to see how much work it's gonna be. I need to not worry about that and sometimes just think about mounting it to the front, whether it's got something on it or not, because her finish is perfect. And I've only had one other instance where I bought something at a Goodwill I brought it home thinking it was a great frame. It had intact glass, but it had, what would you call it? It had some sort of sticker on the glass. Somebody did a Cricut cut and put an adhesive on the glass and then had a picture underneath it. Really cool design, but it was falling off and broken. I just chipped off the rest of it off the glass, but the glass wouldn't come clean whatever was on that 
adhesive almost like burnt into the glass. So I couldn't use that glass piece. So I decided to mount over the glass. Let me go grab it and show you. So even if the glass is something that you either can't clean or is something you can't use because you can't get to the back, through the back of the frame easily, mount it to the front. So I love that she sent me that because I can show her example. And my example is here. So it was, it was a good frame but this glass was almost as if the adhesive was had etched something on the surface. So when I put something under it, you could still see that outline. It just wasn't gonna work. Framing it this way, I have mounted the foam board on top of the glass. Underneath the glass, I have a patterned colored paper that I would use in my carding so it's not going to show up. It's ever so lightly polka dotted. This is a, is it DMC? It's a fabric that already has the lines in it. I did this for my husband for his little coffee room downstairs. But it, it gives the shine of the glass. So it's a really neat effect and it still looks nice. It's not as protected, of course, but I have plenty of pieces that aren't behind glass that have done fine. And the only time I do remove them is if there's gonna be something going on in that room, it's gonna be particularly dusty, like our tile work. So this was a great way to salvage the frame and to have great use of the frame without the traditional sense of it. I wrapped the cloth, the, uh, this is Ada, all the way around. So there's, you know, a very finished edge here, but for whatever reason, I wanted to put the extra trim on the top and the bottom just to kind of give it that coffee shop look, I guess. So I gently glued it to the bottom and the top, which I thought was a cute way to finish it. This pattern I didn't write on the back what it was. She's on the tip of my tongue too. It's a gal that I found during the pandemic. And I can't remember the name of it right now. I'm terribly sorry. I could find it if you really wanted it, but it's one of my husband's favorite. It's one of the morning snorts. <laughs> so he, he thinks it's funny. But remember if you've got a piece and even if you have the glass that you can't use and you do want glass, quite often if you go to your local real hardware store, I don't know about Home Depot, your smaller ones, still a chain, like even True Value or Oshaban, some of the smaller, more personalized uh, hardware stores or even a family owned one, they will cut glass for you, picture glass. You don't have to bring it. You can just go and they will, you know, you tell them I need this size, bring them the frame, it's even better. And they'll wrap it up in paper for you and hand you the piece of glass after they cut it for you. It's sometimes a lot cheaper to do it that way than to go to Michael's or a picture mat cutting framing shop. So I've done that before to have some smaller pieces done. And sometimes it's a scrap piece that they're cutting. If I need a really small one, if I want like a five by seven or eight by 10, and they'll be like, oh, here you take it. So that's been a bonus too. So that's something I was really excited about. I can't thank Karen enough for taking the time and sending that. And I, I feel like it was a long time ago when she sent it to me, but it wasn't too long ago. And I was just so excited to share that with you. Um, and I'm so jealous she went to an estate sale because I'm so itchy for yard sales. Soon, soon we'll have yard sales. What else is under here? Oh, I wanted to show you the progress. I am making, remember the Riolis kit that I have? It's a 
the leaves are cross stitched, the berry and the little berry flowers are all beads. So the whole berry is all bead work. I can't say I'm enjoying this much. I'm not having much success with it. I am finding that the lines aren't lining up, but it's coming. Maybe you guys don't see the gaps the way I do. One of the flowers isn't quite round. I'm okay with that. And we'll see what happens once I go to frame it or finish it off. But there's a gap here, which bothers me. And I've tried to pull it tight. But depending on how I fully finish this, I might be able to bring it together a little bit tighter. But I'll be glad when this is done because this was not as much fun as I thought it would be. I try to do a couple of uh, a couple of lines every time I'm up here, but we we all know that I need to be doing other things like cleaning this area up, which is not happening. <sighs> In my travels up here, I found a whole bunch of stuff that I want to finish getting up. Oh, and I also wanted to talk about, I'm going to just show you. I know I've mentioned her before. <laughs> Peppermint Purple. She has a website. She has a Facebook page. She has a free stitch along. It's a wonderful introduction to black work because she does a lot of different designs that incorporates so many different stitches. So this is one I've downloaded and I have the PDF for it and it has a color picture. And why do I have that? That's another one. Oh, that's cute. This is called Hints of Stitching. It's gonna be hard for me to see this. I just like this because it had, you know, the little floss bobbins and the scissors, but all that intricate black work design that frames it. So it, it was a cute little stitch. I haven't started it yet. I've done two or three of her stitch alongs and I have only framed one. And then I did a honeycomb with bees, which was very challenging, but so rewarding to do. So if you haven't gone to Peppermint Purple, peppermintpurple.com and check out some of her stuff. Uh, it's affordable, it's fun, and there I think there's something for everybody on that site, but this is just an example of one of the designs that I have chosen to bring home. This is 116 by 116 stitches. It has 14 different colors on it. What I think is so wonderful about her Facebook group is that you get to see everybody else's um, ideas for changing up the colors. And on her stitch alongs, she offers different choices for uh, color patterns, different color matches and different thread colors to use in the charts, which is so helpful because it helps you see things differently when she's designing, how she's designing it. I did find another whip in my pile that needs to come downstairs. And apparently I haven't gotten as far as the floss yet. This is from Just Cross Stitch, August, 2022. Being busy. What a cute little spring and summer stitch to do. Happiness is being busy. And I chose this fabric for it, which I don't know what the name is anywhere. It appears to be a 28, Lug 28 count Lugana, over dyed. It's absolutely beautiful. So I wanna grab the threads for this and bring it downstairs, hopefully today. I think the little bees are really cute and it shouldn't be overly complicated. It should be a fun, quick stitch to do. 
so I'm excited about that. The stitch count is only 60 by 60. And I thought, why is this in this pile and not kitted? August 2022 issue of Just Cross Stitch. There's something else tabbed in here. What else did I tab in here? Ah, it's a Doreen Jones. It's a cute little Christmas one. How do I show this? Boop. Isn't that cute? And that looks like a small hoop. What does it say? Design size is only three and three eighths by three and three eighths. So that will be really cute to finish. So maybe I'll kit up both and bring them downstairs. That is a goal. We'll see what I get done. I mean, if it's supposed to be such a massive snowstorm, maybe I'll get a lot of things kitted up. The other thing that's been sitting on my floor and I'm so embarrassed by it. <sighs> I've shown these in, in an earlier video. Aren't those cool? I've got to do these. I have gotten as far as writing out the thread lists and combining them. And I have ordered some flosses. Now this calls for the etoile and I had, there's four different etoiles. I had to order two that I didn't have. So when those come in, I'll do a complete floss toss because I love this yellowed tea dyed effect that this fabric is. They call it, picture this plus. So it's a picture this plus fabric. And on the other one, they used a linen from the primitive hair. So these charts are in, this is October, 2021, just cross stitch. That's this little guy. October 2021. And then Hello Kitty Surprise is in the Halloween issue 2021. So a lot of you guys probably have this. I love the vibrant colors in this. And I think what I'll do is depending on the sizes of them, I might want to frame them side by side in similar frames. Where is the stitch count? I don't know. It's something. It's another project. 107 by 60. They're kind of similar. This one's taller. 152 by 68. So... I'm just tired of looking at them and saying, oh, they're so cool. They're so cute. So that's in the pile. And I'm hoping to get some floss coming in for this one. And this is from Etsy, Stone Street Stitchworks. I love the saying. So I've got everything in here, but one floss color. And it looks like I have the fabric and the threads, except for one thread. I've got, I've got projects I've got to get started. These are my dreams and aspirations. So let me, well, let me go ahead and end this video because what I want to do for you too is to make sure I get some of my prairie schoolers together because the next video is going to be story time with the prairie school binder. And I don't pretend to know how long that's going to take, but I, I'm ready to go down the rabbit hole with you because I'm concerned about doing this video. 
I'm probably going to find many, many charts in my collection that I have to start right away and kit up, which is probably going to mean that I end up with like 80 starts this year. <laughs> we'll do it together, right? But I think I'll, I'll make sure that I can gather some that are running around here in the craft room and we can talk about um, which ones are important to have in a collection and why I bought them. And maybe you guys can turn me on to some that I haven't found out about yet because I do know I have gaps in my collection. I have a friend, Spools, who has, I think, everything ever made by Prairie Schooler. She's got a massive collection. I still need to go down there and maybe do a video of her stuff too. So I'm going to bid you adieu for now. It's almost time for hot tea, even though I'm drinking iced coffee. And I have to figure out what kind of eats we're going to have for dinner tonight. I think we're going to do spinach pie, which is spanakopita. That's Greek for spinach pie. And we'll have that. And then over the big storm, I plan on making some chili and some lemon pound cake in my new bunt pans that I showed you last video. And what else was I? Oh, and I'm making little mini quiches and muffin tins. I don't know if you guys have ever done that, but it's so fantastic. It's a crustless mini quiche done in a muffin pan. And I make up about 12 of them and they last in the fridge for up to four days. And we put a little hot sauce on them. They're fantastic. So those are my plans and hopefully I'll get this edited and up and running and start Prairie Schooler. So have a great time, a great day, happy crafting, happy stitching, be safe.